God bless y'all. Lily, God bless you. Good to see you. flow without fail or delay. Good to see y'all. Come on in. Thank you for inviting your followers. Lift up your hearts on tonight. Good to see y'all. Back on for Midnight Cry. Still flowing without fail or delay. Staying consistent. Ain't never buckling. Ain't wavering. I thank God for a made up mind. I fixed up heart. Amen. Got this title on tonight. A way that by cool see kitty. A way that seemeth right. Amen. We're going to encourage you on tonight. Give just a second for people to get in. Really good to see everybody. Every one of you. Thank you for your heart. Thank y'all for uh, tuning in on tonight. Hope y'all enjoyed that teaching as well. Uh, for the... the prophetic activation classes we had these past three days and when i tell y'all thank god for that um uh one of the church members one of the the sisters pulled me to a side and was telling me how she watched it on youtube and she was like oh i enjoyed it i enjoyed it so much and she was just like it was so it was so powerful and the way you spoke and the way you broke things down in the teaching she was like it was so amazing i said I th and it's nobody but god you know, ain't got nothing to do with me. And like I said, she was so thankful for the teacher. And I said, listen, um, that was something that God put in my heart to do. So I poured out into the people. So I hope it really blessed y'all. Like I say, that teacher right there, um, I had to get up, set my alarm clock because normally I would sleep past that time anyway. So, you know, it was nobody but the Lord that had me get up after working nights uh, cut my sleep schedule to get up and come on and teach. This morning, I almost overslept. The alarm went off. I hit the alarm, but I was so tired, I fell back asleep. But then I got back up. The Lord woke me up at 11.46. Woke me up at 11.46. Then I jumped on to do the, uh, do the, uh, the third day, the final day of the prophetic activation. Stuff like that takes a made up mind, a fixed up heart. See, I'm consistent before God. See, when I when I put my word and I say I'm going to do something, I keep my word. We see too many people can't even keep their word to do stuff. They're not consistent. You can't count on them. Can they count on you to stand in the gap? You know, can they count on you that you're going to, listen, you're going to be reliable. We don't have too many people reliable in this hour. But I thank God for that. I thank God for a made up mind, a fixed up heart. And we're going to come on and flow tonight without fail or delay. And one thing about Brother Travis, you have to understand that, you know, I, I, I'm not, I don't compromise. I don't sugarcoat. I, I give you whatever God give me. And I understand that everybody ain't going to be able to receive the kind of word that I got. Everybody's not going to be able to receive the, the anointed on my life. Um, because one thing about it, when, when you come, when you be authentic and you're transparent, everybody can't take that. Everybody can't take that what you pouring out. See, this is why I have to give disclaimers to people because everybody is not going to like your word. In fact, about it, I already know I'm going to be rejected, despised. I know everybody ain't going to like my word. So I don't, I don't, I don't ask, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't ask people to receive it. I don't, you know, I don't make somebody receive it. You know what I mean? I, I know first fact about fact about it. I know people are going to persecute me. They're going to talk about me, about what I do for God. They're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. And see, like I say, I understand like what I'm going to have to go through for the sake of this thing. For getting this world out, I understand it's going to be warfare. I understand what's going to happen. You know, so like I said, I'm still going to be obedient. I'm still going to be consistent, still doing the midnight cry, despite our opposition. 
I'm still in position. And I already know everybody ain't going to want it. And one thing about it, like I say, the reason why I do disclaimers, because you got so many people in the flesh now. You got so many people in the flesh. You ve you got very few people that are in the spirit that's going to be able to receive what God is saying. So he didn't have an ear to hear. Let him hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. So when you come hear me, you're going to have to be in the spirit. You can't be in your flesh because you're going to get offended. One thing about it, I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge your flesh. See, one thing about it, when you come to know truth, when you come to know truth, you start rejoicing at that. When you live the lie for so long, when you start getting truth, you start rejoicing in the truth. Now, I rejoice in the fact that I get truth about a thing. I have God's word. I have God's voice. God is declaring to me a thing. Now, his word has been revealed unto me, and, and, and he's showing me different things, revelation, insight. See, now I have the truth. See, I can rejoice in the truth. He says, the word of God say, don't rejoice in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth, Bible. So now I rejoice in the truth of a thing about God's word. At this word tonight, beloved, that the title is A Way That Seems Right. We're in an hour right now where a lot of people feel like their way is right in their own eyes. There are people who, who really their conscience is seared with a hot iron. You can't tell them nothing. They can't take counsel. They can't take rejection. They can't take persecution. They can't take a rebuke. The word of God says, listen, preach the word in season, out of season, rebuke, encourage, and correct. So now we already know that people are going to buck up against this word. Everybody ain't going to want it. Fact about it, it's a price tag on this word. It ain't for everybody. And this is why I like, and I, I'm, I'm not saying this in a boastful way, but I, I ask you to share and invite people. But a lot of us see the people that you sharing it to, them people ain't going to like it. Some of them people ain't going to want this work. They're not going to want this kind of word because it, it's not, it's not going with the trend. It's not about gain. It's not about your money is coming. It's your season. The kind of word that I get that God gives me and I have to declare what I see, the kind of word is going to be very offensive. It's going to offend people. So now anytime you start ministering from this word, this book right here, it's going to start showing the people them. It's going to show them what they doing. It's going, to show, it's going to show them they sin. He says, cry loud and spare not. Show my people of God their transgressions. He said, if the men would have stood in my counsel, they would have turned men from their wicked ways. If the prophets would have stood in his counsel, they would have turned people. So the reason why people ain't turning, because somebody ain't declaring the truth. Somebody ain't giving the whole scroll. Ezekiel, he told them, listen, don't eat half the scroll. Eat the whole scroll. So one thing about it, everybody is not going to rejoice at the fact of truth. Everybody don't want truth. It's a way that seems right. There are many people who feel like their way is right. The way they live is right. They feel like the adultery is right. The fornication, fornication is right. God, whatever you do, don't let me think I'm right living in sin. When I fall into temptation and if I do something that's outside of your word, don't let me think that I'm right on what I'm doing. I, I need conviction. So one thing about it, conviction comes from the Holy Ghost. Many of us don't even have conviction about what we do. But then we say we got the Holy Ghost. No, something's wrong. When you don't even feel bad about throwing a piece of paper out the door, out the window in your car, you don't have conviction about that. Knowing you can catch a $200 fine, something crazy like that. I mean, it's the little small stuff God is looking at. God looking at how you do stuff in the natural. That also determines your promotion in the spirit and why you still stuck at the same level because God judging you how you live it. So I'm saying if, if we say we got the Holy Ghost, there should be some kind of conviction. You don't feel bad about masturbating and watching porno. You don't feel bad about smoking weed and getting high and you know good and well you need to be in prayer. You don't feel bad about that? 
You don't feel bad about playing the blackjack, smoking black and miles and smoking cigarettes, snorting the cocaine. You don't feel bad about none of that. That's why I'm saying half of us don't have the Holy Ghost. If ain't no conviction about what you do and you say you in God and you say you called and the anointing is up on your life and you got the little voice of God. See, one thing about it, we got to twist it because we think because we have the anointing, we think that's grace. Don't ever get it twisted. The anointing on your life is not grace, meaning you can do what you want to do because you got your little gift. Because God is speaking to you. Just because God is speaking to you, that don't mean he don't want you to turn. That don't mean God wants you to stay in your mess. How many of us right now, we anointed, but we still messed up? We're anointed and, you know, we think just because we have our little gift and we, we packing our conferences and packing our platforms... That listen, we don't have to we don't have to repent and turn. You the main one that gotta repent, because it's gonna be worse on you than anybody. So I'm saying if you if you got a word and God has an anointed you and appointed you, and you preaching and prophesying, and you fall outside of God's word, you better get somewhere and cry out and repent and say, God forgive me for what I'm doing. Forgive me for the wrong I did. God forgive me for lighting a cigarette. Forgive me for watching a porno. God, forgive me for masturbating. Help me to turn. Repentance comes from the Greek word metaneo. It means to turn. Help me to turn away from this thing. God, give me strength to turn away from it. See, something's wrong when you start rejoicing in your mess. You start rejoicing. He said, don't rejoice in iniquity, but yet rejoice in the truth. See, they ain't going to rejoice in this. Because they still want to rejoice in their sin. So now, I'm not I'm not the popular preacher. And I ain't that prosperity preacher that's going to come on and play with your soul. Okay, I'm, I'm going to be real with you. Now, I'm not going to come on here and give you something for your flesh and not for your spirit. Your soul. Because your flesh want everything. Your flesh want the money that's coming. Your flesh want the check in the mail. And God going to bless you. And God going to move for you. And that you bless coming in. You bless coming out. See, flesh want all that good stuff. But see, now, not by cool say, now when somebody come behind with a sword, one thing about it, I don't bear the sword in vain. I don't bear the sword in vain. When I come with a word, listen, I'm coming to cut something down. I'm, I'm coming. Because in this hour, we got a lot of people that think their way is right. They so prideful. You can't tell these people nothing. Look at them on your job. They so arrogant. They prideful. They agnostics. They don't believe. They're blasphemy right there in your face. No, no conviction. No cry. Half the believers don't even have a cry. They have no conviction. You still in the club, but got the Holy Ghost. You understand? You still snorting cocaine, but got the Holy Ghost. And ain't no conviction. No, that that's not, that's not the Holy Ghost. Because one thing about it, if you were doing what you were doing and you had the Holy Ghost, you'll be saying, God, help me to get it right. God, I don't want to be like this. God, I don't want to be messed up. God, don't let me die like a fool. Don't let me die in my mess. God, don't let this addiction consume me. God, don't let the porno consume me. You'd be getting somewhere and crying out saying, God, deliver me. God, set my CK. God, set me free. Break the shackles in my life. Break the chains in my life. Break the wickedness, the wicked imaginations. God, set me free. You wouldn't be rejoicing in your mess. That's if we truly have the Holy Ghost. How many of us can truly say we got the Holy Ghost? If you got the Holy Ghost, then where's the conviction? Where is the conviction in your life behind what you do? There should be some kind of conviction now. Now hear me on this. Now there's a difference between just saying, okay, I messed up. I messed up, God forgive me. But see, when you know you're doing wrong, you know you're doing wrong and you don't you have the nerve not to come to God and at least apologize and say, God, forgive me for what I did. That's pride that got you like that. That's pride that got you rejoicing and, and what you're doing is you justifying. Now you justifying why you're doing it. 
You justify why you're mean and nasty. You justify why you're cheating on your husband. Now you justify why you're homosexual. Why you're a lesbian. Now you justify, oh, I was born this way. I was born this way. It's genetic. See, we got excuses of why we are the way we are. We have excuses of why we why we still drug addicts. We have excuses why we still fornicating. We have all the excuses, but then we turn around and say we got the Holy Ghost. That's a ghost, but it ain't the Holy Ghost. I'm gonna be real with you. I'm gonna be real with you. See, I'm not gonna sugarcoat. I'm gonna give you the truth. I'm gonna give you 100 percent the truth. I'm gonna give you this thing raw. Raw. Ain't nothing gonna be cut. It's gonna be uncut. It's going to be pure. Remember that pure cocaine, that straight vodka, that stuff we used to like in a world. We wanted all the way straight when we was in a world, but then we get on God's side. Now we want somebody to water something down. You didn't want it watered down then. You didn't want to compromise then. You didn't want it then, but then when you get on God's side, now you want somebody to play with you. You want somebody to compromise and sugarcoat and accommodate them. See, now you used to satisfy your flesh. See, now when you have to die to your flesh, now you can't take this kind of work that it's too much and that it's bondage. Yeah, you, you know what? You're right. It is bondage. It's bondage. You know what it's bondage to? Your flesh. It's bondage to this flesh. If you don't kill it, it's going to kill you. If you don't kill your flesh, it's going to kill you. Apostle Paul said, oh, deliver me from this body of what? Death. Your flesh is a killer. Your flesh is a killer. So let me let me jump into this word before I get ahead of myself because I'll just flow. I'll flow because on stuff like this, it, it's, it's very sad to sit back and watch people. And, and sit and you see the destruction they going down. And you say, man, listen, I, I don't, I don't think you should be doing that, man. You, you know that's not right. You know, you, you know, you should come up out of that. You know, the choice you're making is wrong. You know. But then they sit and just, it's like, yeah, you know, I know, I know, I know what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Like, just arrogant and prideful. Why? Well, I'm gonna show you something. There's a way that seemeth right. There's a way that seemeth right. So watch this. Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 18. Proverbs 16, 18, he says, Now pride goeth before destruction. How many prideful people we got? You know what pride will do? Pride will have you in a place that you think everything is right, everybody is wrong, you can't take counsel, can't nobody tell you nothing, they got to ask you something, and, to, and, and basically ask you and imply something. Because you're flying off the hand of pride. I have you just flying off. It'll make you think everybody is wrong. Everybody is the enemy. Everybody is against you. That's pride. Pride to have you unforgiving. Pride to have you holding stuff, justifying stuff, being jealous, being envious, just prideful. Walking around with this haughty spirit. Got your nose up in the air. Pride to have you worshiping yourself. Proud to have you broadcasting your title. How many prideful people we got? He says, pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. That's the thing that comes before your fall. That's the thing that comes before your destruction. You know one thing about pride? Pride is a sneaky spirit. Pride is a legion spirit. And what it is, see, if you don't get the legion spirit, it what that what that spirit does, it branches off other spirits. So there's different things that's connected to pride. Fornication is connected to pride. Perversion, homosexuality, pride, pride branches all of this stuff. Why you think you feel like it's okay to fornicate, but then you say you got God? That's pride got you thinking it's okay. What got you rejecting a man of God, rejecting counsel? That's pride that got you thinking it's okay. That's pride got you thinking it's okay to hold on to the enemy and hold on to God. 
That's pride that got you thinking it's okay to be still messed up living in perversion. See, pride will have you like that. He says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before pride, before fall, excuse me. That's one of those spirits right there. You cry out and say, God, remove this pride. God, I'm tired of being prideful. Can't nobody get to me. I think my way is, my way is right. I don't know how to compromise with my wife. I can't compromise with my husband. I'm cursing everybody out. It's my way or no way. So much pride. Don't know how to take down for nothing. Just angry for no reason. Snapping out on people. Exalting, exalting your titles. It call my my cool see. Pride will have you doing that. They say, look at me, I'm gifted so I can do what I want to do. I have the anointing on my life and God is speaking to me so I can go what I go where I want to go, do what I want to do, cheat how I want to cheat, lie when I want to lie. Pride to have you thinking it's okay to do all of that. Pride to keep you from deliverance. Many of us, and see one thing about, somebody listen to me on this. God said in his word, I resist the proud, but I give grace to the humble. I'm giving grace to the humble. I'm giving grace to that humble brother, to that humble sister. I'm giving grace to them that see, listen, they, they're not trying to exalt themselves. They stay at a low degree. And if they do messed up, they're saying, God, you know, God, help me. God, forgive me. God, I messed up. God, I know I did wrong. God, God, I know I slept with the woman. I know I slept with the man. I know I snorted the cocaine. God, I know what I did. But God, forgive me for that. God want to know if you just want to be honest. All you got to do is be honest with God. Just be honest with God about what you do. The word of God says confession is made unto salvation. All you got to do is be honest with God. So you come before God lying when he says, behold, my eyes are in a good place and an evil place. I see how you mean and conniving. I see how you nasty vindictive. I see what you just did. I see how you cheated. You gossip, sold discord. I see what you did. But see, I just want you to come before me and confess it so I can come in and heal. God can't heal what you won't reveal. That's why he said confession is made unto salvation. And the word also says confess your faults to one another. This is all Bible. It ain't coming from Travis Miller. I'm just saying I'm trying to help you get pride up off you. This is a sneaky demon. This demon right here is sneaking your life and you won't even know it's there. That spirit of pride will sneak up on you and you just feel like you're all right. Pride will sneak in and what's crazy, people have discernment. There are other people that can see that spirit up on you. They see you arrogant. They see you flaunting your cars. Talking about how much money you got. Stuff like that come from a spirit of pride. When you boastful, when you boasting about evil. These people right here in this hour, they boast about evil. They boast about their evil ways, their wicked deeds. They boast about how many women they sleep with. They boast about how many men, how many men, how, how, how they took their money. And all he did was pay my bills. Oh, these women boast about stuff like that. This, this generation right here, they boastful and they prideful. It's all pride. See, pride come, goes before destruction. See, that's what's going to take a lot of people out. The devil ain't going to take you out. Your flesh going to take you out. Your flesh going to take you out. Because, see, you stuck in a way, Kamako say. You stuck in a way that seeming right. See, every man is right in his own eyes. See, you not knowing how you living is not right. You have no conviction. You have no crime. And you don't have a heart of repentance. You're not, you don't even have, you see, you lost, you're losing your prayer life. You disconnecting from God. You yoked up with these demonic soul ties. Now you want to kill yourself because of the spirits you invited. And now you're talking about suicide because all this stuff you done got yoked up with. 
That's why the word of God told you, do not be unequally yoked together with the unbeliever. Now those spirits have gripped you because of what you yoked up with. Now your soul yoked up with this soul tie, that soul tie. So you don't know what is what and who is who. All these men that have been inside you. All these women you done slept and been inside. Now you got all these soul ties and now you contaminate it. When he done told you to come out from amongst them and be ye separated. Dealing with strange women. Dealing with strange women, strange men in and out of bed with dope dealers. Not knowing your soul is getting tied up. See demonic soul ties. Those demonic soul ties will take your mind. They'll take your soul. Them things will drive you insane. It'll drive you to suicide. It'll drive you to perversion. Somebody better listen to this right here. Those demonic soul ties ain't no joke. Those things that have you yoked up, these things will torment you because of what you jumped in bed with. Because of what you fellowship with. Oh yeah, it's a way that's seeming right. Yeah, he got the money, he got the car. But that demon that's on him about to twist in you. Yeah, we got demonic soul ties from what we connected to. Y'all ain't gonna say amen on tonight. Y'all ain't gonna say amen. But see, one thing about this kind of message right here, one thing about I'm not an entertainer. I'm not here to entertain nobody. Because I have to declare what I see. These people think they right. They're on these drugs, these this Molly and stuff. Different stuff I ain't never heard of. And they sit and they think it's right. They think it's okay to be like this. They think it's okay to be jumping in and out of beds. Multiple partners. And they think this stuff is okay. It's a way that's seeming right. See, pride got you like that. Pride to have you rejecting the truth. See, now pride to have you rejoicing in your iniquity. One thing you don't never rejoice in, don't never rejoice in your sin. You cry out from a plabasto say. You cry out from a place and say, God, please do not leave me like this. God, don't leave me with these demonic soul ties. God, don't leave me with this, this bipolar depression. God, don't let me, don't leave me with these suicidal thoughts. Don't let this addiction consume me. You have to get into a place where you cry out and just not say, not stay complacent with where you are. Don't stay complacent in your sin. Don't stay complacent in being like that and being stuck in addiction, stuck doing a porno, stuck masturbating. Can't stop cheating, can't stop lying, can't stop living in adultery. And then we have no conviction while we're doing it. There's a way that seems right. It's pride that got you thinking that's okay. It's pride that got you thinking you can jump in and out of bed with each woman each night and think it's okay. That's pride that got you like that. That perversion got you, that lust got you. The drugs got you. See, this this stuff, it seems right right now, what you're doing, but it's not. Take it from somebody who knows I've been there. I've been there. I did all that. I came from sexual immorality. I did the drugs. I did the partying. I cheated. I lied. I did all kinds of stuff I wasn't proud of. See, I was right in my own eyes. But it was by the grace of God that I am where I am today. See, I am a miracle. See, I, I was that guy. I, I was the guy. I was that guy that had all the drugs. Yeah, I had the money. Yeah, I did that. See, I was that guy. But see, when God come, oh, say, when God comes in and change you from glory to glory, when God come in and change you from inside out, start eliminating one, one thing, one by one. See, I was that guy. But see, I had to realize, wait, what I'm doing right now is not right. The way I'm living is not right. I have to acknowledge this thing first before God can come in and do something for me. I thank God I'm not where I used to be. I thank God for conviction. I thank God for a cry. If I feel like I've done anything wrong, God, please forgive me. If I had the wrong thought, God, please forgive me. 
God, forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me for what slipped out of my mouth. Forgive me if I had to wonder an eye. Lord, forgive me for that. I didn't mean to look at her like that. I didn't mean to say what I said. I didn't mean to insinuate and imply what I said. I know what my heart said, but then I tried to cover it up like I didn't say it. But I know what my mind was saying. I know what came out of my mouth. But I have to sit and repent and say, God, forgive me for what I said. Forgive me for cursing in my mind. Like, forgive me for all that. Like, I go through so much in my mind. I be doing, I be contemplating things in my mind. And see, I have to tell, I have to say, God, cast down these wicked imaginations. Your flesh is going to do it day in and day out. I have to fight this flesh. I have to beat this flesh black and blue for the sake of the gospel. The sake to give a word to you because now, I, now I'm accountable for what I minister because the word has to be pure. It has to be pure. I have to confess my faults before the people. People will reject me because of the stuff that I confess. How am I wrong when the word told me confession made it to salvation? How am I wrong for confessing my faults? But see, everybody can't handle your nakedness. They can't handle when you're being transparent. I've had people come on here and tell me, told me, oh, what you said was too much and I didn't like it and it rubbed me the wrong way and this and that. And I, I thought you was a man of God. You don't know what I am. I'm chosen from my mother's womb. You don't know what I am. You judge me based on my appearance and by what I spoke. When God told me confessions made it to salvation. How about confess them incubus and them succubus spirits you're dealing with? Confess how you can't let go of uh, uh, masturbation and porno. Confess how you still lying and cheating on your taxes. But see, before we can uh, get a plank and a, a, a stone out of our other our brother's eye, make sure you get one out of yours first. You understand? I don't come on here and condemn people for what they do. I have mercy and I show love. But guess what? I'm going to show you the truth that God don't want you to be like that. You got to get conviction. You got to get a cry. You got to cry out. Get your prayer like bind and loose this stuff. I don't come on here and beat up a sinner. Y'all don't never hear me come on here and beat up a sinner. I never do that because you know why? I come from a place of love. The anointing comes through love. We have to get to the place where we at least have conviction about what we do. Not rejoice in our sin, rejoice in our mess. Yeah, you got your little anointing. Yeah, you hear from God. But do you think that justifies what you do? That does not justify what you do. God just wants you to be honest and say, God, listen, forgive me for what I do. Amen. Watch this. Proverbs 14, verse 12, he says, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end, their ways, and, and the end thereof are the ways of death. He's not just talking about natural death, but he's talking about a spiritual death as well. Your ways that you think is right will disconnect you from a holy God. God said, be ye holy for I am holy. So the stuff that you do and you constantly don't have no conviction, you don't have no crime and you justify it, that right there will disconnect you from God. When you don't rejoice at the truth and then you start rejoicing in your iniquity, you're not getting to a place and say, God created me a clean heart, renewing in me a right spirit. God, take this stuff up, oh, stick core by seed. Take this stuff up out of me. And God, what I want you to do is search my heart. Search the very reins of my heart. And if there's anything that's in me, get it up out of me. God, search my mind. Pull out these thoughts that are not of you. God, don't let me set no evil thing before you. God, don't have me listening to everything. Don't have me speaking everything. God, give me conviction. God, send the Holy Ghost. Send the anointing of God. God, don't have me thinking I'm right when I'm wrong. Many of you doing stuff and you think you're right when you're wrong. And then you say you got the Holy Ghost and you say you got God. And all it is, you, you're not fooling me. You fooling yourself. Because if you're doing that and you say you got God and there's no conviction, you do not have the Holy Ghost. 
Because guess what? The Holy Ghost is going to be your conscience. He's going to be your God. He's going to tell you when you're wrong. You're going to feel when you're wrong. When you show, when you sow gossip and discord on your job, you know you did wrong. You had no place. You had no, that was no business. You had no business being in what you've been in that conversation. You had no business conversating with that man. You had no business talking nasty to that man. Both of y'all married. You don't have no conviction about it. You don't have no conviction about the phone sex. You don't have no conviction about smoking a marble cigarettes. Ain't no conviction about that, but you say you got the Holy Ghost. He said, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost? You don't feel bad about putting everything in your body. You don't feel bad about snorting the oxycodone. You don't feel bad about snorting the Lord tabs, doing the Lord tabs, drinking, snorting the cocaine, the molly, the ecstasy. You don't feel bad about doing the vodka, drinking the boxes of wine. You don't feel bad about it, but you say you got God. No, there should be some kind of conviction saying, God, please don't leave me like this. God, don't leave me in my mess. God, I'm tired of living like this. God, I'm tired of living in sin. God, come in and overtake me. I know this ain't your, your, your prosperity message because many of y'all know me. I'm not a prosperity preacher. This is right up my alley right here. And, and because I want to get you to a place where your soul is saved. It called my Bible say. He said he satisfies the hungry soul. And he fills the goodness. He fills the hungry, the, the thirsty soul with good things. See, we need that. I need my soul fed. I need my soul fed. I get enough of this stuff from my flesh. I'm tired of uh, pleasing my flesh. How many want to please God? How many God pleases we got on here? How many God pleasers do we have on here? How many want to please God? How many want to go to another level in God? How many ready for this flesh to be consecrated, put on a subjection so you can say, so you can touch a place in God? How many want to go to that holy mountain? How many want to go to that place in God? How many are ready to soar in the spirit? We're getting ready to be overcomers of the sin. We're getting our cry back. We're getting our conviction back. We're getting our depths in prayer back. We're getting our relationship back with God. We're going back to the altar seeking God and crying out. We're getting ready to touch God like never before. You getting ready to be free. You getting ready to be free. God, I still say God is getting ready to overturn the captivity. Yeah, I see what you're going through right now. You may be anointed, but you messed up. But God getting ready to change you from glory to glory. He don't want you to stay like that. God don't want you to stay broke. He don't want you to stay sick. He don't want you to stay depressed, drug addicted. God wants to free you. He wants to liberate you. God wants to come in and clean you up. He wants to set his people free in this hour. The man you might be today, you might not be tomorrow. That's the way God works. God can move in a twinkle of an eye. Every man will be changed from glory to glory. I want to be changed. God created me a clean heart. Renewed in me a right spirit. God, you can take away everything else from me. My job, my money, my wife, whatever. But don't take away your Holy Spirit. Don't take your presence away from me. Don't take, don't take them Holy Ghost doodads from me. When I feel your presence, when I feel that glory. When I feel you come into the room and speak to me with that sweet, still, small voice. God, don't take that from me. I don't want to lose my anointing due to sin. I don't want to lose my blessings due to sin. Send the Holy Ghost. Christ was manifested to destroy the work to the enemy. The enemy is not going to consume you. The enemy is not going to take you out. You are chosen from your mother's womb. You have been ordained. God getting ready to use you. He's getting ready to anoint you. See, we are not getting ready to stay like that. 
We're coming up out of that place. We're coming up out of that dark place. God is shining his light. God is shining his light down from heaven in this hour. He's getting ready to shine on the children of the light. We are children of the light. He says, as I am, so are you in this present world. If he overcame, I'm going to be overcomer. If he got up, I'm getting up. Out of every dead situation, I'm getting ready to arise to the occasion. I'm getting ready to arise in ministry. I'm getting ready to arise in everything God has me to do. And cool, Bob, we're getting ready to arise in this hour. Get ready for God to take you to another level. You're going to get your conviction back. You're going to get your cry back. God just want to see if you can be honest. Can you confess your faults? See, God will come in and clean you up when he see you sincere, when you want to get it right. When you want to get it right and you don't want to be like that. Beloved, there's a way that seemeth right, but the end thereof is death. It's not just a natural death, but it's a spiritual death. There are certain things that can disconnect us from God. And I don't want that for me and I don't want it for you. We're getting ready to come out and be free. You're getting ready to be free. Somebody, you're getting ready to go to a place of sanctification. You're getting ready to be celibate. You ain't going to want a man. You ain't going to want a woman. You're going to be able to say no to sin. You're going to be able to say no to the alcohol. Somebody getting ready to pour the alcohol down the sink. You're going to say, I don't want it. You're going to say goodbye to the cigarettes. You're going to say goodbye world and hello Jesus. Yeah, that my boss will say goodbye world and hello Jesus. You're getting ready to come to him and as I would have made up mine and a fixed up heart and saying, God, I want you more than anything. I want you more than cars. I want you more than money. I want you more than my job. I want you more than anything. It called my boss thing. God, let me decrease so you might increase in my life. God, let this flesh decrease so that glory might increase in my life. Let the anointing increase in my life. Let you increase in my life. Beloved, we're getting ready to be changed in this hour. I just want to encourage you, just flowing without fail or delay on tonight. There's a way that seems right. And one thing I, you have to understand, beloved, in this hour like this, there are many people who feel like they are right in their eyes and they're wrong. Your lifestyle, you're the way you live in. See, listen, that's bondage. You bondage to sin. You bondage to the enemy. See, he got you right there. He got you in that place. That's like God. God wants you to be delivered. God wants you to be set free. See, God wants you to prosper in this season. Above all things, I wish for you to prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. God wants your soul to prosper. You've been living in your flesh long enough. You've been in your sin long enough. God getting ready to restore. God getting ready to bring you up out of that. In Jesus' name. God bless y'all. I love you so much. I just want to encourage you. By the way, that's seeming right, amen. Anybody have any questions, any prayer on tonight? Good to have y'all on. Hello, Sister Shelly. I saw y'all come in. Brother Sky, y'all came in a little late. Regina. Uh, Robin, Mary Kendricks, Lily, uh, Candy Moore, all you that's on Alfred. Really good to see y'all. Amen. So that was a word on tonight about a way that seems right. You know, a rough word, a uh, serious word. Uh, because if, if we're in God and we say we got the Holy Ghost like we say we do, we need conviction. You got to have conviction. See, God, we got to come into the fullness of God in this season. That's what God wants us. But see, God wants you to get to a place that you confess your faults, that you remove the stony heart, that you repent, begin to cry out. Say, God, I don't want to be like this. God, I don't want to be messed up. I don't want to be um, uh, addicted to porn or addicted to drugs. God, I'm tired of living like this. God, I'm tired of being anointed, but still messed up. God, see you. God, see your cry. God, see your heart. There are some of you who are sincerely saying, God, I really want you, but I can't stop messing up. <laughs> God, I really want you, but it's like I can't come out of sin. It's like the enemy got a foothold. The enemy got a foothold. Just holding on to me like, God, as soon as I get a little forward in, in my spiritual life, I get pulled right back down in this flesh. Who am I talking to? You have to understand, beloved, that's all normal. It's normal. 
because you're walking, you're walking with God. You're trying, you striving to enter in. You striving to get to that place. And like I said, you have to understand who you're looking at on this screen. If you only knew where I came from, if you understood my testimony, you'll say, if God pulled this man out of that, he can pull me up out of that. So you have to understand, beloved, like God wants us to be changed. God don't want us in bondage, bondage to the enemy and bondage to your flesh. No, we're getting ready to be liberated. We're getting ready to be set free. You are not going to stay like that. God getting ready to liberate you, get you out of that place. Amen. You had a question about, you had a question about soul ties early. No, I, I didn't have a question. Uh, I was talking about it, but I didn't have a question. Or somebody else did, but I didn't have a question. Or do you have a question about soul ties? You have to scroll back. You had a question about, so hold on. So do we, oh, okay, you say, I had a, oh, okay. You say, so do we cry out to God to get rid of soul ties? Yes, you do. And you denounce the soul ties. You denounce their full names and you keep praying against it. Thank you. Thank you. Now I saw what you're saying. You cry out against it, yes, and you fast. Some demons only come out through fasting and praying. Some demons, I have those spirits locked in. Cause they don't want you to get free. Them soul ties are serious, man. Like, um, them soul ties will be in and out your dream. They'll be in and out your dreams. And that's something you got to cry out and denounce it. Denounce their names. Full names. Get rid of stuff that you had from them, that you borrowed, that they gave as gifts. Different things like that. Renounce that stuff. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Anyway, any other questions, any prayer? Good to have y'all on. Thank you for the hearts. A lot of beautiful hearts on tonight. Y'all must love me. Y'all must love me. Nobody but the Lord, amen? But God bless y'all. So can you define a soul tie? Soul ties are anything you become, your soul become yoked up with. It's a yoke. It's basically a yoke. And your souls become latched on to another soul. That's what a soul tie is. It can come through sex, communication, different things like that. People you're around, uh, that's how soul ties are formed. That's why some of you like to imitate other people. You like to imitate your best friend. You imitate your mama. You imitate your ex, your ex uh, girlfriend, your ex boyfriend, your ex husband. That's because those souls got yoked up. That's why some of y'all, y'all see them soul ties in and out your dream. Sometimes you be having sex with them. You be having sex with them soul ties in your dreams. And y'all be on the phone with them talking in dreams and stuff. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Really, I did not know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One day I'll do another. I'll do a teaching on that. I did one like last year uh, talking about soul ties. Amen. But God bless y'all. Father, we thank you on tonight. Just for everything you're getting ready to do, God, we thank you for your for your glory getting ready to move in this season for your people. God, break the stony heart. Lord, let, let your people see you and not us in this hour. When all that we do, when we step out before you to be used, God, kill pride. Because, God, you said in your word tonight that pride comes before destruction. God, don't let us fall in this season. God, we thank you for encouragement, and we also thank you for the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. So God bless y'all. I'll be back on tomorrow night. If this word was a blessing to you, also be a blessing back on tonight. Give into the ministry, amen. And if you need my information, it's all on a profile at ProfitTravisMiller at gmo.com. Everything you need is there. Also, go subscribe to YouTube. Amen. I have a YouTube channel as, on, as well. And I also have a Facebook um, with the High Rooms Ministries page, amen. So you can go back and uh, replay the mess. You need information. And all the information is on the profile. You just have to click on the link above, amen. So if you have any other questions, just email me personally and reach out. So God bless y'all. See you back tomorrow night with another Midnight Cry. Love you. Be blessed.